the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, the World Bank and the government of Sri Lanka sign the second resilient stability and economic turnaround development policy operation for 200 million US dollars. A delegation of the Asian Development Bank meets with President Anurakumar Disanayake at the Presidential Secretariat with a focus on ADB's ongoing commitment to support Sri Lanka's economic and social development. The start to the week over at the Colombo Bourses seemed to be off to a positive trajectory with both the ASPI and SNP SL20 closing with gains. And the International Monetary Fund staff team and Ghanaian officials have reached an agreement on the third review of Ghana's economic reforms, paving the way for the disbursement of an additional 360 million US dollars in loans to the country. From Studio 24, here's Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. A very good evening and thank you for joining us. The World Bank and the government of Sri Lanka today signed the second Resilient Stability and Economic Turnaround Development Policy Operation for 200 million US dollars. This is the second operation in a two-part series that began in 2022. The first operation, totaling 500 million dollars, was disbursed in June and December of last year. The second reset DPO aims to support reforms that improve economic governance, enhance growth and competitiveness, and protect the poor and vulnerable, helping to build Sri Lanka's resilience and fostering an equitable economy. The operation focuses on improving economic governance to create a stable macroeconomic environment and to restore investor confidence through key reforms. This include enacting a new Public Debt Management Act to better inform borrowing decisions, implementing tax administration reforms to boost revenues, and addressing financial sector risk by tightening single borrower limits and improving mechanisms for resolving non-performing loans. To improve living standards and boost private sector development, the operation includes amendments to Telecommunications Act and a new Electricity Act to improve services in these markets as well as measures to enhance export competitiveness by phasing out para-tariffs and lowering custom duties. Central to the operation is the protection of poor and vulnerable. This will be achieved by revitalizing the social protection system to help the poor and vulnerable cope with the lasting effects of the economic crisis and price adjustments resulting from macro-fiscal reforms. Enhancing women's empowerment and reducing gender discrimination to promote higher and more sustainable growth in Sri Lanka is another key feature. The country director of the Asian Development Bank Resident Mission in Sri Lanka, Takafumi Kadono, along with a delegation, met with President Anurakumar Disanayake today at the Presidential Secretariat. The discussions focused on ADB's ongoing commitment to support Sri Lanka's economic and social development. During the meeting, the ADB reaffirmed its dedication to continuing its projects in Sri Lanka, with particularly emphasizing on bolstering key sectors crucial to the nation's recovery. Tourism was identified as a crucial sector that holds immense potential for the Sri Lanka's economic growth. In this regard, the ADB assured further assistance in developing tourism infrastructure to harness the sector's full potential. President Disanayake highlighted the importance of promoting tourism in the northern region, requesting ADB specific support to develop this area. The ADB delegation expressed its willingness to collaborate to provide resources for this initiative. Beyond tourism, the ADB also expressed keen interest in aiding the development of Sri Lanka's energy sector, small-scale entrepreneurs and financial sector, emphasizing their role in fostering sustainable economic growth. This continued collaboration between Sri Lanka and the Asian Development Bank is expected to contribute significantly to the country's long-term development and recovery efforts. Sri Lanka's external current account recorded a 415 million US dollar surplus in the second quarter of 2024, according to central bank data, as debt repayments and reserve collections at an appropriate interest rate allowed outflows from through the financial account. So far in 2024, the current account is about 1.1 billion US dollars in surplus, and economy started to recover. Sri Lanka started to record current account surplus from around third quarter of 2022 when the central bank stopped printing money and its deflationary policies started to show up in the balance of payments. The financial account officially started to show a deficit from the fourth quarter of 2022, as loans were repaid on net basis and private banks are also repaid syndicated loans and later billed dollar reserve to cover net open position shortfalls. The financial account is the mirror image of the current account. In the way external accounts are prepared, the so-called deficit in the balance of payments is known accurately as it largely reflects changes in the balance sheet of the reserve collecting central bank with a policy rate. Other items including tourism are estimates. 
However, the balance of payments always balances whether the current account deficits are created by borrowing abroad and investing or spending domestically, or BOP deficits are created by printing money and running down reserves. Sri Lanka's Ceylon Chamber of Commerce said International Monetary Fund and Official Credit Committee clearance for an in-principle deal with private bondholders will pave the way for fiscal stability. Sri Lanka said the IMF and OCC had given their OK for the latest tweaks to a deal with bondholders to restructure debt. Sri Lanka plans to issue GDP-linked upside downside bonds and some plain vanilla bonds linked to governance indicators which are yet to be decided. The Trade Association said the Chamber looked looks forward to the completion of the restructuring of Sri Lanka's external debt. The completion of the OCC and IMF consultation process is a positive indicator for ensuring successful future reviews and disbursements under the IMF's extended fund facility arrangement, which will be essential in the country's journey towards fiscal stability and economic transformation. The steadfast commitment to aligning with the comparability of treatment principle has been crucial in advancing Sri Lanka's broader economic reform agenda. The chamber also added that they are appreciative of the quick response of the OCC countries and IMF in this regard. Let's take a short commercial break now. Market updates on the other side. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. The start to the week over at the Colombo bourses seemed to be off to a positive trajectory with both the ASPI and the S&P SO20 closing with gains. The bullish outlook is continued from the mostly positive dominant trading of the previous week. And for more on today's trading sessions, we have with us Anjali Matthews from First Capital Holdings. Today, the Columbus Stock Exchange closed in green, reflecting the sustained positive sentiment we've seen post-election, with the ASPI reaching a three-month high to close at 12,165, gaining 111 points and marking a 0.92% increase from the previous day. Accordingly, the S&P SL20 index also saw significant gains closing at 3,595, gaining 52 points and marking a 1.46% increase from the previous day. So the top contributors towards the positive index were banks and blue chip firms via CD Holdings, Sampath Bank, Hatta National Bank, John Keels Holdings and Commercial Bank who dominated positive contributors. So market turnover for the day stood at LCAT 2.8 billion, marking a slight 2% decrease from the previous day and a 53.5% increase from the monthly average. So the top gainers for the day include, the, include Blue Diamonds Jewelry non-voting and voting shares and Nation Trust Bank non-voting, while top losers for the day are Nation Lanka Finance, Office Equipment PLC and Paragon Ceylon PLC. With the bosses off to such a start, what movements can we expect to see for the unfolding trading week? Well, for analysis, we have with us Demantha Matthews from First Capital Holdings. Thank you. So, looking ahead, uh, we think that the market run is likely to uh, continue uh, during this week as well. There seem to be a lot of positive news uh, coming around. So, We've seen that uh, over the weekend that uh, multiple announcements on the external debt restructuring which is an extremely uh, positive scenario for the investors. Uh, now little by little we are seeing that the uncertainties that were there in the system are gradually moving out. With it what happens is when the uncertainties uh, sort of uh, go out of the system we see a lot of investor confidence coming back into the market and new investors starting to uh, come back in fund flows moving in uh, towards the uh, stock market so with all this happening uh, buying interest is uh, likely to continue and even uh, significantly improve further in the coming days also another thing is uh, the completion of uh, external directory structuring is uh, 
uh, uh, very positive for the foreigners as well where there could be a lot of uh, foreign inflows uh, that is likely to come into the stock market so with that uh, further on expectation of that uh, further buying interest is likely to uh, be there in the market there is a significant uh, interest towards the banking sector because that is the biggest uh, beneficiary uh, from the uh, external debt uh, restructuring and with it uh, we are seeing uh, most of the other sectors also starting to get uh, activated we believe that there will be a lot more uh, retail activity in the market we saw even today a lot of uh, retail activity uh, that is there but we think it will uh, further improve and turnover levels are likely to continue uh, above the uh, 2 billion mark at uh, very high levels. Gold prices experienced a slight decline in Asian trading today, continuing to adjust after a significant drop from their record highs. This downward movement comes in the wake of strong U.S. payrolls data, which has intensified speculation around a smaller interest rate cut by the Federal Reserve. As of now, spot gold has decreased by 0.2%, settling at $2,647.64 per ounce. Meanwhile, gold futures for December delivery have also seen a like dip priced at $2,667.10. The recent surge in the U.S. dollar and rising treasury yields have contributed to this retreat in gold prices. Traders are increasingly recalibrating their expectations, with many scaling back their predictions for a 50 basis point interest rate cut by the Fed in the near future. Oil prices fell today after posting their steepest weekly rise in over a year last week as oversupply concerns amid softer demand countered the worries of a wider Middle East war, disrupting exports in key producing regions. Brent crude futures fell 0.4% to $77.74 per barrel, while the U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude futures slipped 0.27% to $74.18 per barrel. Brent rose by over 8% last week, the biggest weekly gain since January 2023, while the WTI contract gained 9.1% week on week, the most since March of last year. On expectations that Israel could strike Iranian oil infrastructure in response response to an Iranian attack missile on Israel. However, as the Israeli response is still developing, some investors likely sold futures to lock in their gains from the previous week's rise. The Sri Lankan rupee holds steady against the U.S. dollar in commercial banks today, maintaining its position from last week. According to Commercial Bank, the buying and selling rates for the U.S. dollar are unchanged at 288 rupees and 28 cents and 298 rupees respectively. Now, let's take a look at how the Sri Lankan rupee is performing against other global currencies. Take a short commercial break. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Designed to revolutionize blood disorder testing with unparalleled speed using advanced diagnosis technologies which enhances precision and accuracy, Arsari Laboratories unveiled the latest state-of-the-art hematology analyzer MindRay BC6800+, a cutting-edge instrument and the world's fastest standalone unit at its flagship laboratory at the Arsari Medical Hospital. The innovative high-end analyzer promises to deliver unprecedented precision and efficiency in hematology testing, marking a significant milestone in the medical diagnostics industry and healthcare sector with enhanced patient care in the country, serving a vital need. In today's healthcare landscape, laboratories need rapid, accurate results from increasingly complex blood disorders. 
The Mindre BC6800 Plus meets these challenges, offering unparalleled speed and precision. As the world's fastest standalone hematology analyzer, it processes up to 200 samples per hour with 100 sample loading capacity. It also performs automated ESR testing at 120 samples per hour and body fluid testing at 40 samples per hour, signifying a paradigm shift in Sri Lanka's hematology analyze capabilities. Furthermore, coupled with Arsari Laboratories, innovative solutions such as introduction of the QR codes on receipts and test reports, a holistic approach to faster diagnosis and improved patient care aligned to international standards. The introduction of the hematology analyzer is expected to have a profound impact on the diagnostics market. By offering a superior combination of speed, accuracy and ease of use, the instrument is poised to set a new benchmark for hematology testing with Arsari Laboratories network in over 120 locations island-wide which the benefits of this technology will be accessible to a wide audience of customers in the country. Honoring its 125 years long legacy, Pepsi, a brand that has been at the center of global pop culture, unveiled its new identity in Sri Lanka today through its groundbreaking campaign, Pepsi Street Color. The Pepsi Street campaign represents a groundbreaking moment for the brand, introducing its revamped brand identity through public art for the first time globally. With 17 murals featured across the country, this initiative is an attempt to democratize art through dynamic experiences that invite public interaction and make art and culture more accessible. Pepsi celebrates this milestone with a spectacular launch event at the iconic Lotus Tower, South Asia's tallest self-supported tower. The event brought its bold identity to life through immersive experiences, captivating the audience from start to finish. Media influencers and individuals from the art community in Sri Lanka enjoyed a sensory feast, with the honor of Pips resonating throughout, showcasing the brand's vibrant spirit. The highlight of the evening was the illumination of the Lotus Tower in Colombo, with Pepsi's new bold colors transforming the city's skyline. Speaking on the launch, Anuj Goyal, Associate Director Asia Country's Region PepsiCo, said that Pepsi has consistently been at the forefront of youth culture and with this initiative, they are extending this dedication to the streets of Sri Lanka. The new Pepsi logo represents a bold new chapter for Pepsi, bringing it to life through street art with Pepsi Street Color campaign. Flagship streets across Sri Lanka are featuring vibrant murals that celebrate Pepsi's refreshed identity and bold new logo. Strategically placed at iconic locations, the murals have become popular selfie spots for locals and the travellers. These visual immersive artworks are renditions of how artists see Pepsi connecting with Sri Lanka's youth, highlighting themes like food, music, dance, culture and sports. Uber Eats has unveiled a new campaign, Get Almost Almost Anything, focused on its expanded range of products offering much more than just food delivery. Customers can use the platform to order cooked meals, groceries, health and beauty products, pet food and more, catering to a variety of everyday needs. This campaign underscores Uber Eats' growing role in daily lives of Sri Lankans, with seamlessly delivering their favourite food items and beverages, groceries for cooking at home, gifts for loved ones and other essential items. Varun Vijayvardhana, who is the country manager for Uber Delivery Sri Lanka, stated that as Uber Eats evolves, they wish to reiterate their commitment to continue bringing the best of Uber to the country and become a one-stop shop to meet daily needs of their customers beyond just food cravings. With few clicks, customers can get almost anything from food to beauty products to flowers and more. On the list of most popular items ordered on the app, rice and curry continues to top the list in cooked meal category, while Chinese rolls are the most hot favourite when it comes to satisfying Sri Lankans' demand for short eats. But beyond food and grocery items, Sri Lankans turn to their favourite delivery app for a wide range of items such as baby care, cleaning supplies, beauty products, stationery, pet care and electronics. Prior to the launch in Sri Lanka, the global campaign Get Almost, Almost Anything has been executed in Australia, the United States, Mexico and Taiwan. The Q Plus payment app powered by the Commercial Bank of Ceylon can now be used by customers of other banks as well following its integration with the Just Pay platform of LankaPay, the operator of Sri Lanka's national payment network. Announcing the integration, Commercial Bank said customers from any domestic bank that supports the Just Pay QR platform. Announcing the integration, Commercial Bank said customers from any domestic bank that supports Just Pay platform can download and use the Q Plus payment app for QR codes transactions, bill payments, fund transfers and other payment types enabled via Q Plus and also enjoy a host of benefits and offers throughout the year. The first Lanka QR certified mobile payment app in Sri Lanka, 
Q Plus payment app is also the only QR payment solution enabled for Sri Lankan merchants that supports six type of QR codes, which are Lanka QR, Visa QR, Mastercard QR, Union Pay QR, Indian UPI QR, and Alipay QR. Its integration with Just Pay makes the app accessible to a broader customer base, thereby increasing convenience and fostering a more inclusive financial ecosystem. Considered one of the most reliable payment apps in the country with over 99.99 uptime and fast transaction speeds, Q Plus Payment app went trilingual earlier this year and offers the highest number of payment related options among similar apps. Positioned as the next dimension of payment options, Q Plus Payment app was just the best mobile app of retail payments in Sri Lanka at the Lanka Pay Tech Innovations Awards consecutively for two years in 2023 and 2024. The app enables cardholders to pay through multiple payment options via their mobile phones including Scan and Pay by scanning the merchant's QR code. Since the launch, the app has undergone numerous functionality enhancing upgrades. Going in for a short commercial break now, we'll be right back with global updates. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Asian stocks rallied and the dollar reached a fresh seven-week peak on the yen today after blowout U.S. labor market data dispelled fears of a recession and spurred a sharp powering of rate cut debts. U.S. Treasury yields touched two months' highs, extending their rise after the closely watched non-farm payrolls report on Friday showed the economy unexpectedly added the most jobs in six months in September. Japan's Nikkei opens new tab-led regional equity gains with a 2.28% rally, given additional momentum by the softer yen. Hong Kong's Hang Seng rose 1.45%, Australia's stock benchmark added 0.68%, and South Korea's Kospi gained 1.5%. Mainland Chinese stocks remain closed until tomorrow for the Golden Week holiday. The Adani Group and Google announced a collaboration that will advance the company's collective sustainability goals and add more clean energy to India's grid. Through this partnership, Adani will supply clean energy from a new solar wind hybrid project located in the world's largest renewable energy plant at Kavda, Gujarat. This new project is expected to start commercial operations in the third quarter of 2025. With proven capabilities in delivering large-scale wind, solar, hybrid and energy storage projects, Adani is well positioned to provide customized renewable energy solutions to commercial and industrial customers to meet their energy requirements and reduce their carbon footprint. Going forward, Adani plans to increase the focus on merchant and CNI segments to help decarbonize industries. This innovative collaboration will help advance Google's 24-7 carbon-free energy goal by ensuring cloud services and operations in India are supported by clean energy and thereby contribute to the sustainable growth of Google in South Asia including Sri Lanka. The IMF and Ghana's government have reached an agreement for a fourth tranche of its loan facilities, paving the way for the disbursement of 360 million US dollars into its economy. The leader of the IMF staff team, Stefan Rudit, announced at the end of the team's visit to the West African country. IMF expressed satisfaction about Ghana's performance under the reform program which the IMS supports with a loan of $3 billion. US dollars. He noted that the economic growth in the first half of this year was much higher than initially envisaged, adding that the external sector has seen considerable improvement in this year, driven by strong exports, particularly gold, oil and higher remittances. Rudet said that the IMF expected that strong monetary policy stance of the Bank of Ghana to continue pushing inflation downward, commending Ghana for reaching a deal with its bondholders and the Official Creditors Committee on Day Treatment. The IMF officials said the Ghanaian authorities are committed to pursuing good faith efforts to reach an agreement with other commercial external creditors on a debt treatment consistent with the program parameters and the comparability of treatment principles. More than 98% of the Ghana's bondholders approved a deal last month for the country to exchange $13 billion in euro bonds for new bonds in the coming weeks. The European Commission said it had received enough support in vote of EU members to impose tariffs of up to 45% on imports of Chinese-made electric vehicles in the bloc's highest-profile trade case. 
A majority of EU member states agreed Friday to impose tariffs of up to 45% on imports of Chinese-made electric vehicles. But the European Commission did say it would continue to negotiate with Beijing to find an alternative solution. The body said it had received enough support in a vote of EU members in the bloc's highest profile trade case. The Commission had proposed final duties for the next five years. It wants to counter what it sees as unfair Chinese subsidies after a year-long anti-subsidy investigation. The tariffs range from nearly 8% for Tesla to 35% for Saic and other companies deemed not to have cooperated with the EU investigation. It's been a highly divisive issue within the bloc itself. EU sources said 10 members supported tariffs in Friday's vote, with 5 against and 12 abstentions. It would have taken opposition from a qualified majority of 15 EU member states to block the proposal. Sources said Germany, a major car producer, voted against. Its car industry urged Brussels and Beijing to avert the planned tariffs through a negotiated deal. BMW CEO Oliver Zipser called Friday's vote a fatal signal for Europe's auto industry. Mercedes-Benz also called the tariffs a mistake, while Europe's top car maker Volkswagen called it the wrong approach. The EU's stance towards Beijing has hardened in the last five years. It views China as a potential partner in some issues, but also as a competitor and a systemic rival. The Commission says China's spare production capacity of 3 million EVs per year, which needed to be exported, is twice the size of the EU market. Given 100% tariffs in the US and Canada, the most obvious outlet for those EVs is Europe. Beijing this year launched its own probes into imports of EU brandy, dairy and pork products. The moves were widely seen as a retaliation. And that's all from us here at the Nightly Business Report. Join us again tomorrow for more key updates across the business globe. Until then, I'm Anwar Vikramasinghe. Thank you very much for watching. Good night.